So you think you have what it takes to be a moonshiner. Rockstar Games will test your resolve with the Moonshiner expansion to Red Dead Online. Is it any good? We're going to find out. Hello YouTube, Jeremy here from JMK3 Gaming, and it's time to talk again about Red Dead Online. As an early Christmas present to the online variant of Rockstar's Western Simulator, you are able to start your moonshining enterprise December 13th, 2019. Before we get into it, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications for all the latest content from JMK3 Gaming. I also stream on Twitch, so check out my Twitch channel for the full live streaming schedule. The requirements to start the Moonshine expansion are you have to be a level 15 trader or have completed a sell mission with the trader. The holidays just finished and the PC version just launched, so there is an increase in new players and having easy starting requirements means every new player can get into this expansion very early. You start by meeting Maggie, an old moonshiner caught by revenue agents and presumed dead. She asks you to get one of her old moonshine shacks up and running again. To do this, you will need 25 gold. The 25 gold won't be available to new players, but there is a one-time offer on the real money stores to get the 25 gold at a very reduced price, $6.99 here in Canada. So there is always that option. I picked up Red Dead Redemption 2 on sale for 50% off, so to me the 25 gold was worth the extra seven bucks. This is the first purchasable property in Red Dead Online. There are several spots to choose from across the map, from up in the hills, to the swamp, to down in the desert. Each area offers its own benefits and challenges to overcome. Don't worry if you pick a location that doesn't suit you. It could be moved for 250 cash, and then eventually 187 cash. The main moonshine story follows you as you start to build up your team, deal with the competition, and there are showdowns with the revenue agents. These are supplemented by bootlegger missions which come in six or seven variants and range from tampering with the competition's product, bar fights, taking out revenue agents, and uh, destroying crops. These missions reduce the cost of the base ingredient for crafting moonshine, but come with a 15 minute cooldown. All in all, there's plenty to do while ranking up. There are several upgrades to be made to the moonshine shack, like upgrading the still to improve the quality of your shine, and even an expansion to the basement where you can build a bar and invite your posse in to have a drink while listening to live music. There are a bunch of cosmetic upgrades to be made as well. As you rank up the moonshining roll and unlock the still upgrades, you can start to craft a better quality shine, which takes longer to craft but yields better rewards. Weak shine takes 30 minutes to finish, average 45 minutes, and strong takes an hour. But when you hit rank 15 moonshiner, the strong only takes 48 minutes, so it, it does get better. While mash is purchased from the Moonshiner business menu, you will have to hunt down supplies if you want to craft flavored shine, which also increases the rewards. There are three levels in the flavoring. Ingredients can be found all over the map, such as raspberry, currants, wild berries. These are easy enough to come by, and the canned or fresh fruit can be bought right out of the catalog. The top tier recipes require collector level flowers, such as Creek Plum or Agarita. For help with this, you can always use Road Key's collector map. Search for what you need and happy hunting. I'll put a link in the description. Once you have 20 bottles of shine ready to sell, it's time to earn some money and some XP. Deliver the product to your designated buyer and try not to get caught. Flavored weak shine sells for around 60 bucks and nets you around 400 XP to the roll and to general rank. Top tier strong shine pulls in 247 cash and 924 XP. So is it worth it? The story missions offer a variable set of tasks with strong characters. Maggie is a tough as nails old woman who has seen her share of success and experienced a drastic fall from grace. Her backstory and connections to the moonshine world provide you with a strong depth of immersion that is all too typical of Rockstar. So, there's two ways to get ahead in this business. One, raise the quality of your product, or two, lower the quality of the competitions. 
Number two requires a little more ingenuity. There's a new operation popped up not too far from here that I think needs to learn just how precarious this business can be. Be as ingenious as you want. Maggie's inept nephew, Lemuel, adds some comedic relief and then some annoyance. Woo! Permission to come aboard. So, this here's the merchandise. It's top-notch stuff, so be careful with it. Come on, help me get it unloaded. Ooh, 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 watch your foot in there, land lover. Uh, wait, where are the wagons? I, I arranged two drivers. God damn it! I planned this whole thing. Least folks can do is show up on time. The constant lectures from Marcel, the moonshine crafter, can be entertaining, but after rank 15, they start to get tiresome because you can't skip them. Ooh, we can afford no mistakes with this. Purity, that is uh, what they are paying the big price for. And that is what Marcel has created, is it not? I have not slept, I have not rested, I have stopped at nothing to create these little jokes of heaven, eh? But now, relax and uh, enjoy your trip. Revenue agent Reed Hickson's ruthlessness lead to him being a strong antagonist to your questionable endeavors. For the manufacture and distribution of an illegal substance, escaping state custody, running bail, and tax evasion. And today, we will bring the fullest force of the law down upon you. You just can't stop running your mouth, can you, you moronic hick? You need to watch who you talk to. Move in and bag those rats. And bring five to me. There are also some familiar faces that tie into the offline story, further proving Rockstar's ability to craft an immersive and connective world. The bootlegger missions are fun, but there really isn't enough variety. There are definitely mission types I prefer to do, such as bar fights and crop burning. While I found myself begging not to get a tampering mission. It became easier to just start shooting than to sneak around and just have to start shooting anyway because you get spotted by the second to last enemy. Taking out revenue agent checkpoints is not bad, but that's because of the fun times Rockstar always gives us with taking on the law. The cell missions are the typical cell missions for Red Dead Online. Get from point A to point B, don't get caught. But this time around, there's the added element of damaged product. Drive too reckless or take damage to the cart and you'll break bottles. Also keep in mind that Moonshine is highly flammable. I cleared out a checkpoint on a delivery and didn't notice a lantern was broken and there was fire on the ground. I drove through it, the cart caught on fire and I lost my entire shipment. The Moonshine role is kind of a Trader 2.0 role, so there is no need to wait the timer out to maximize reward. That's honestly a concept I just can't wrap my head around. Okay, so let's reward you for taking longer. And you wanna know what the funny thing is? That decision was approved by more than one person. You know, oh well, moonshining is not affected. Crafting quality shine is easy enough if you have the right ingredients. Depending on where you set up your camp and shack, there are plenty of ingredients around to collect. Top tier requires collector flowers, but with the map from Ropekey, it is manageable to get high-end ingredients during a single cook time. Mash cost starts at 50 bucks, but can be brought down to 10 if you do enough bootlegger missions. As your bankroll increases, they really become less important. I usually do one bootlegger mission before crafting to get the price into that 30 to $40 range. This way I'm bringing in a $200 profit minimum per sale. The set it and forget it style of crafting is Red Dead Online's first truly passive income business. I know some of you are gonna say that the trader is passive, but I really disagree. It takes far longer to hunt three star animals and bring them in than it does to collect enough ingredients for four to five batches, which is four hours worth of crafting materials and four to five sales. The rank rewards and unlockables are plentiful and the unlockable clothing is spot on to get you feeling like a true, distinguished moonshiner. Inviting friends into my shack to have a drink was fun, 
for all of five minutes. It really just comes down to time spent standing around and not really making any progress. There is no income to be made from the bar, so it's all about just completing the feeling of being a badass moonshiner. One nice feature is that there is no idle time out while in your shack, so if you start a batch of shine and have to do something, just park in the shack and AFK you go. No worries. Choosing where to place your shack can be somewhat overwhelming, especially to new players who might not be too familiar with the map and terrain. I mentioned earlier that bottles can be broken by reckless driving, but even the slightest bump from driving off-road or a hard smack as you cross a river can end up to lost bottles and less profit. Definitely take terrain into consideration when picking your shack location. Worst case scenario is you suffer through it for a couple of sales, save up enough money to move locations. Local ingredients should also be considered. One of the ingredients I used while ranking up was vanilla flour, and it spawns right outside the front door of the shack in Bayou Noir. Upgrades should also be planned ahead. At rank five, you'll be able to unlock average shine, and at 10, you can unlock strong, but they cost over $800 each. The bar expansions also come at a steep price, and some decor is purchased only with gold. With Rockstar's continued partnership with Amazon, Twitch Prime members will receive the Copper Still upgrade for free. So get over to Twitch and link up with your Rockstar Social Club to get your free upgrade. The Moonshining Roll is a fun way to spend time in Red Dead Online. The one nice feature with it is it can be done either solo or in a group. If you are more of a solo player like me, you will have no issues hitting max rank by yourself. There is only one choice of sale mission and they're fairly short. There is also no player griefing causing lost shipments. Friends joining you on sale missions will get cash and Moonshiner XP, so there are reasons to play as a posse. One side note though, is that you must have the Moonshine roll unlocked to receive rewards for helping a friend's Moonshine business. So, is the Moonshiner roll worth the time or not? The Moonshiner gets the worth the time seal of approval. Good characters, good story missions, a purchasable property, truly passive income, and the ability to unlock the expansion early and not have to rely on groups to progress all make this expansion worth the time. Rockstar might have their glitches in Red Dead Online, but it feels like they listened to the feedback from the trader role and improved upon it. All of this for what is in essence a DLC that can be unlocked without having to spend real money and this is a great expansion. So let me know what you think in the comments. Have you stepped down the path of a shiner? Do you prefer solo or in a group? What is your favorite shine to craft? As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We appreciate all the support and catch you next time on JMK3 Gaming. I think that's all of them. Christ, that was a close one. <laughs> oh. All right, these docks look clear. Let's unload and get the hell out of here.